Hey guys, welcome to the OC Show episode 7 and that's our live Q&A and uh, yeah, it took us a little bit time to get started today because we had some awesome Belgian waffle here in, in Belgium's at Massman's place and yeah, we couldn't we couldn't start the live without actually finishing the fresh waffles, you know, when they're still warm and yeah, you, There's nothing you can do for that. Amazing. Just, so so just yeah, amazing. we end up a little bit late, but you know what? We actually got some awesome guests uh, for, you, for, for you today. We are here with uh, Daniel, Dan Cup from uh, uh, Germany. So, um, hi Daniel, how's it going? Hi guys, everything fine? <laughs> and we also have with us uh, Julius, uh, also known as Iru from uh, Czech Republic. Hi Julius, how's it going? Hi, it's great. <laughs> I would really like a waffle though. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 I know that. <laughs> and uh, with us, of course, we have Truffman, our uh, dear editor and producer and uh, cutter. So if something breaks, it's obviously his fault. <laughs> So on HW, it's all mess man's fault, and on the CTV, yeah. it's all my fault. Okay, I got it. And for those of you that actually followed the Aces live stream uh, last weekend, uh, today we have actually competition pigeons with us, and uh, we have awesome internet here. So there's absolutely no reason, hopefully, crossing fingers, touching wood, that nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so what are the topics for this uh, episode seven? So we will uh, go through uh, some of the topics that was that were in the video that you guys just saw to, uh, just a minute ago, and we have some extra. Um, well, let's say we are free to talk about pretty much everything we want. Yeah, and so, uh, especially with the guest that we have today, uh, we yeah, can so have a lot of topics for yeah, that. Yeah, the idea is if you guys have any questions about anything we are talking about or just want to react or something. Uh, just feel free and then at the end we will have some, um, something more like a discussion so it's something about things that haven't happened yet which is more like a, not necessarily just rumors but you know just talking about it so the first topic for today would be uh, talking about the Eshtaibad World Tour 2015 in Europe that took place at the Gamers Assembly in France which I should remind everybody that's the largest friends, uh, French LAN party with uh, about 2,000 gamers this year and actually they um, they gave us the number and they had 15,000 visitors so it was not a surprise to so have three days that's actually uh, uh, quite impressive yeah so that's why there was a, like a, a serious amount of uh, overclockers on the booth and i think um it was quite a success in terms of teaching you guys about overclocking but not just that also the the gathering went really well we didn't use that all the 3000 meters of m2 almost almost uh, yeah yeah it's um it was quite over a... 2000 meters though. yeah yeah so we're gonna get back to that the second topic for today is the asus rog camp in germany so that was a a competition for guys uh, that uh, knew already about um, overclocking and they had never done LN2 before. So some of them had already done uh, extreme cooling, like uh, dry ice and mm -hmm. something like this, but never LN2. And they uh, were taught there how to practice, how to insulate, uh, you know, how to react to your first um, cold bug. Cold or, bug or cold boot. Right. And then on the next day, they had a competition. So we went there, we were streaming from there last weekend and everything went quite well, actually, on the competition side of things. And even on the stream, there was a lot of... You guys uh, being there and we had uh, quite a serious amount of giveaways as well and uh, among them uh, one GTX 960 that we haven't given away yet uh, it won't be for today but we're gonna organize some uh, cool competition about it so if you guys have any idea of how we could give this away um, just throw it into the chat, you know. And uh, third topic for today, the Rookie Rumble and Novice Nimble. So those are competitions that are running right now at the um, OCSports.io. They are organized by um, the guys from the HWBot. And those competitions are for the most uh, rookies and beginners amongst the uh, overclockers. So people that have less than one year of experience. Um, there are two very different formats and they both target different uh, strengths and qualities uh, that are necessary to become a good overclocker. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. And the fourth topic for today is Computex. Uh, yeah, Computex, Computex yeah. the largest, uh, the most amazing computer yeah. trade show in the world. It's taking place every year in Taiwan, and um, usually that's the occasion for the Taiwanese manufacturers such as uh, Gigabyte and SI. Um, there's JSK, Asus, uh, like, Asrock. Like, yeah, the memory let's say pretty much everyone is there. All the yeah, Taiwanese the companies, yeah. yes. And uh, usually that's a great occasion to launch new products. Uh, right now, only rumors about what is going to be launched. Um, rumors. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's going to be some overclocking going on. And we actually have with us uh, Daniel that will be uh, talking a little bit about how he is going there and what exactly he's going to be doing there. So... Um, 
Don't forget, guys, we are monitoring the live chat, and I would like to thank uh, some of you guys that are uh, following us for a long time. Uh, thank you, 360 Matt, Irotrax, Mr. Gentleman X, Orion24, Eddie Bicato, Suits OC, and Transmetan Events. You guys rock, and you guys loved the joke about the pigeon. Yeah. And if you didn't catch uh, pretty much all the joke about the pigeon, you can go on our Facebook and a YouTube channel yeah. to rewatch some of the replay from the ROG camp last weekend. And most that of them are also good. still on Twitch on the replay video. Oh, yeah, and on Twitch thing, on the so video on Twitch. Actually, sure. you don't even need to leave the Twitch page. It's fine <laughs> as well. All right, so let's attack our first topic. Um, I talk about World Tour Europe. Um, Truthman, you were there. You were doing the, um, the live stream as well as helping out with the logistics. Uh, we even actually rotated over the night, so you were more on the night shifts for the first yeah. two days. <laughs> Tough job. Tough job indeed. So um, what is, uh, what's your take on the event? What did you like about it? So we did a lot, talk a lot about the event already, but I have to say that I, I love this event. I, I loved it. I loved it. I love the Germans assembly, the, the way that the people does it. Uh, you have to remember that's the biggest land party in France. They have over 15,000 people that uh, did visit over the weekend. Um, this is a huge part of all the volunteers, although at the Gamers Assembly, mm -hmm. uh, there are like over 300 uh, volunteers for there. And for like the mm -hmm. SWBOT World Tour event for Europe, that was just uh, perfect. Everyone was friendly, everyone enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, all the other clickers had the, like the space to bench. Uh, well, they had unlimited LN2. Yeah. And some of them say, ah, oh, 3000 meters, maybe that's not going to be enough. Turn out that they use like uh, I think like 2100 or 2400. Yeah, 2400 approximately. 2400 we, liters. We account for all the losses when filling yeah. the doors and everything. Plus I, transportation. For me, the event is a complete <laughs> success. Was uh, was awesome to do the live. We did some uh, some good Q and A with some of the the people on the live chat, although with some guests that just passing by and. Yeah. We had some yeah, good discussions. You can actually uh, rewatch some of the uh, of the video on our YouTube channels. <laughs> and uh, Iru yeah. is showing you right now the the T-shirt he got there. <laughs> yeah, proud and loud. Awesome. Because actually, uh, Julius was at this event. Yeah, he was there, and now he's hiding behind his T-shirt. But um, Julius, Julius, you were there, and uh, what exactly? Uh, what exactly was your plan going there? What were you expecting before before the event? Oh, I was in a, such a hurry that on the way I didn't really think about things, but I <laughs> was excited, excited not only to meet you guys, which I have no, which I know for some time, but lots of other overclockers. But I didn't like think about it uh, yeah. in detail. So not just, so much of a large bench plan when you went there. You just grabbed no, of everything no, no. you could grab and just took the Yeah, plan. I grabbed a 10 Pentium K CPUs and a board and that's all. <laughs> so how did that work out with your 10 K Pentium Ks? Oh, uh, all but ones uh, were pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, that was fun because, um, like, I think that was two weeks before. Uh, Julius came to talk to me on Skype. Like, hey, man, uh, do you know the best way to go from, uh, like, from Czech Republic to uh, to Poitiers and so on? So I was like, oh, man, you have to either drive or take the plane or take the train after that and so on. So we did we did actually like discuss a little bit up front, but yeah, that was quite last minute for uh, for him to uh, to go through. But yeah. well, you, you enjoyed the event so far, right? Yeah, but next time I'm going by car because we'll, with all the stuff you need for <laughs> overclocking, it, well, it's, it was much time, worse. Yeah. Maybe next time on the way from Czech Republic to France, you can probably pick up Dan Cup on the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be easy. Why not? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty much right on the way, straight through the forest. Yeah, it's maximum yeah, maximum, maximum attack, attack to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, actually uh, what was also interesting at the, so at the Gamers Assembly was uh, the training of the amateurs. And um, that was something that uh, we, had, uh, we had done already at the LAN ETS, but at a much smaller, smaller scale. But I have to say that I was quite surprised that we could, um, at the event, uh, get the guys from the Clan OC and Concord Land to uh, participate through the workshops. And uh, basically um, take over uh, what uh, I was doing for the training, or even you were doing Truthman for the training, and just keep on tr keep on training the whole day. And basically every day uh, for two days, from 11 to 6 p.m., there was like every half an hour there was another batch of five new guys that had learned the basics of overclocking. And most of them didn't knew anything about it. Some oh, yeah, of them yeah. just heard about overclocking in the, on the website or read about it, but never, like most of them never tried. There's all kinds of guys, you know, they, they, there's the regular console player that has no 
no clue exactly what exactly this the, even the difference between his uh, a PC or a console. You know, there's uh, a lot of gamers. They they, they usually um, they buy whatever they can get at the price they can afford. And usually, still surprisingly, a lot a lot of the guys go for the unlocked CPUs. You know, because I guess the the inter marketing here is working very strong, and people are like, hey, if I pay a little bit more, I, get, I might get something extra. But it's true if you you really have to learn how to actually use the product to get most up uh, out of a kcpu so that was the the chance for most of them and most of them were surprised how easy you can actually and how high you can go um just just on air um dan cup you you weren't there at, the, at that event but um what uh, what did you thought about uh, what you saw on the for instance on the stream or just on the pictures you saw online and what you heard about the event yeah sad, sadly i was not able to join that event I mean, we, we talked a lot about, you know, um, before the event and uh, chatted around. So, um, yeah, I, I'd like to join it the next year, but this year it was pretty much too hard for me um, regarding the, the family. And, yeah, it was free free weekend for all of us. So uh, it would have been pretty hard for me to, to leave here. But uh, honestly, I've watched around 10 to 12 hours on Twitch <laughs> of the entire <laughs> event. So uh, it was always funny. My, I have the Twitch app on, on my uh, mobile. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and it was pretty amazing. Uh, I, I don't like these events for novice people. I love it because, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, really. So I think it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and, and very, very important to give these guys a chance to play with ni liquid nitrogen. Um, for me, before I started, was like I, I was too afraid just to put something on coal um, because of water or dead motherboards, CPUs, whatever. And just to see it works with all these cold and ice uh, made me a bit confident, and, and I started to do it all over again. So. Um, yeah, I think it's it's very very important to give these events uh, to to those people. Yeah, well, that's true, and uh, I think a lot of the guys we we even saw some of the guys that uh, that won the competition there. The, even the amateur guys that won the competition, they they um, so basically they won almost the whole rig besides the motherboard and uh, memory. And what the most of the guys did that won, they went straight away to buy a motherboard, get a memory kit and just start actually benching. And we see them now in the competitions that are, of course, for now just on air, but I think it won't take long before those guys are going to join the next event next year and just learn to, to bench it and do it like, like you were saying. Uh, Iru, you wanted to, uh, to react to that? Mm, to what uh, exactly? <laughs> I, thought, I thought you wanted to say something about it. But, it uh, actually, uh, about the like, well, about the event, like yeah. the world tour event. I could talk for hours because it was I. I didn't for the last like two years. I didn't overclock that much, but this this gave me like um, like a lot of positive energy to do it again. And I think that's I don't like online competitions that much but with with the guys that were there it was a lot of fun and i think that's basically what if i if i would name 10 best things about overclocking eight of them happened there so <laughs> that's pretty cool and you actually shared the um, you were sharing the 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 bench house with the french guys right Oh, just one. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, yeah, you were mo most of the time at the venue, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't spend. You had you had a bed there, but you know. One one you cold night <laughs> with pizza and and what was it? Some kind of beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So uh, this was a, there was a question also on the on the Twitch from uh, 369 question for the. Uh, for the more events in Europe, Massman dude, for my questions, I think, um, so yes, I think there will be more events in Europe. Uh, for example, we're already seeing right now the guys in the UK organizing something uh, themselves. That will not be branded actually about World Tour, though. Uh, it's that... not going to be branded actually about World Tour, but you know, it's all, it's always different events. And I think it's, uh, it's cool to see, you know, it's like the World Tour is open to anyone that wants to join it. So if someone has a cool event and... Just wants to uh, to add it to the to the to the tour passage somewhere in his country. There's absolutely no problem with that. And I think yeah, we're going to see more events of the kind. Actually, we were talking with the guys from the 
the game was assembly after the event and they really loved the, the overclocking booth and what was going on there, you know, that people could, uh, you know, as an organizer of the LAN party, what the people want is that they, the, the, they, the people that participate to the LAN are engaged in the different activities. It's, it can be the partner booths, it can be the different competition finals, but it's also all the workshops and where people can actually uh, interact with something that is computer related, which make it some kind of um, di digital festival or something yeah. like this. It's a good ambience too. I mean, uh, we did attend a few of the Gamers Assembly before and it was always this kind of like a friendly, uh, friendly atmosphere and, uh, and everyone. Uh, actually, talking about the amateur before, uh, we have uh, Orion 2424 on the live mm -hmm. chat. Yeah. yeah, he's actually the one that finished third, if I'm right, yeah. in, the, in the competitions. And that's actually uh, funny because he went back home with some of the hardware. <laughs> he he bought a main board straight away. He bought like a, I think there was a memory kit or yeah, yeah that was, or, that's what or I was PSU. saying before. He, yeah. he bought he bought the system and he just bench it and he was actually trying to push higher than the score he had yeah. on the. Uh, and I, I already saw some of those guys already PMing uh, Wizardy uh, that because uh, I think Wizardy did the training for them or something and so they they, they they you know they already maybe knew him before but you know now they're like yeah on Facebook hey I have this problem I'm blocked at this uh, what can I do then and you know that's exactly the the spirit that we wanted to get for the, the world tour it's like it's no, there's no need to take it at a, at a super you know like a competitive kind of level it's like the, the thing is to make it something really really social uh moving on to the next topic the asus rg camp in germany so that was last weekend that was last actually weekend. we just yes. we pretty much just came back from it <laughs> yeah because we we uh, did a quick passage uh by my parents place in france and by your parents place as well and we had a you know a little uh, uh, culinary tourism passage. Uh, let's say that uh, what we did eat in some country, you cannot even have it. Well, it's, uh, it's amazing food, actually. Yeah. So it's it was... some truly French food. And it's some truly one. You, you can have that only here. Yeah. So that ASIS event uh, was taking place in the south of Germany, near Nuremberg, in a city called Schwabach. 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 And, um, so yeah, it was uh, really interesting because they had an online qualifier to uh, pick eight guys. And uh, I think almost 30 guys participated across Germany to, to come to this event. So the eight qualified guys would uh, be taught their how to bench with uh, LN2. The requirement was you should not have any experience with liquid nitrogen to compete in these uh, competitions. So... The eight guys arrived at the locations, and they were like there was one day of training, uh, training and workshop, yeah. and then the second day was the competition between them right after like the um, like the first training, and um, so the comparison with the HG Robot World Tour that was uh, on the uh, on the weekend before yeah. was that was te uh, teaching people <laughs> that have no clue about overclocking how to overclock their PC and do compete. And actually, the ROG camp in Germany it the was week the next after step, right? was just the next step. So you, the people already know how to overclock, and you just push them to one step further, like going to cold. Yeah, and uh, like I think uh, the Dan Cup you mentioned, it's true that uh, you're always scared <clears throat> either to overclock or to overclock on LN2. And uh, if someone gives you a system or you have someone next to you that shows you how to do it, uh, it makes a f it makes things or the, the it makes the, the the crossing of that barrier <clears throat> a lot faster. Uh, I don't well, know. Yeah. Can I say something? Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't. It's not like a barrier, but if somebody is really, really curious about it oh, and yeah, yeah, starts sure. to understand, you know, what you should do with overclocking and has the system in front of him, and loads and loads of questions come up, and it's great that if you have someone near you who can help you with some very <laughs> some question in regards to will it, will it how much voltage is too much will it do this will it do that yeah. and it just uh, it's the perfect i think the rog camp is like the perfect introduction to extreme overclocking yeah. and i personally would love to have such an opportunity when i was starting <laughs> and uh, yeah I, I, can, I can just agree yeah so um um it, it is like like you said um uh, but but for me, to be honest, it, it, it was a truly a uh, big barrier. Um, not not the um, liquid nitrogen or whatever. For me, the barrier was uh, condensation and water on on any resistors or whatever to kill something. Hmm. So um, yeah, that, and and for me it was Roman. It's no secret. Um, Roman just insulated my my board and and all the stuff, and it was working around four hours 
So uh, yeah, I was, I was pretty confident, and yeah, that showed me nothing happens <laughs> unless you unless you give too much voltage. But <laughs> <laughs> that happens a few times as well later on. <laughs> and, and actually, a few months or a few years later, you just beat him at his at his own game. <laughs> So he's probably a good teacher, right, Dan Cup? Oh, sorry? The Roman is a good teacher for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, um, he... <laughs> yeah. The, the... Ah, I can hear some backstories right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Best backstory is uh, he was uh, coming over to me. Um, it was like two and a half years ago. Um, and, and I was focusing some benching a four-way, four-way Titan on water. And also a 3960X, Sandy Bridge E. And yeah, as he came, he had a pot with him and five kilograms of dry ice. And yeah, that was my starting career of overclocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's a cool story actually, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's quite funny that I also started with dry ice and those guys at the ROG camp went straight to LN2. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, some of them yeah. did try dry ice some, before. Some of them, but yeah, I, think I think only two, two of them. Yeah, like two of them. Everybody else was went straight from air to, uh, to LN2. Some guys never had done any water cooling either. Yeah, actually, there was like a... The, uh, the, that's the only guy I cannot pronounce his nickname. The Schlinger? The Switchler. Switchler. <laughs> Switchler. That guy actually uh, was in the rookie rumble just a few months before. So that guy is still working just for like six months, pretty much. Not even six months, five months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was actually... Uh, no, it was really, really cool, time, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, it was a very, very interesting uh, competition. And I actually really liked that they had the... They really had the time, you know. They had two days, so it was no rush. They had the whole... The first full day where, where you came, uh, Daniel, where you were, yeah. like, uh, talking with the guys, you know, even a bit benching with them. So that was... I, th I thought that was really cool, you know. Like, you did 150 kilometers to come to just see those uh, guys that were benching for the first time. And I'm pretty sure for them it was, like something quite amazing you know you, you can think it's like well it's the number one of germany just coming to check out what we are doing you know it's pretty cool it's a good motivation yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> i'm the number one in czech republic and i came just for the beer <laughs> <laughs> i'm not even surprised I, <laughs> I, 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 i've had to drive uh, 170 kilometers back so <laughs> there, there was just just one light beer i i have with uh, timo so <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a lot of kilometers. That's really, really quite amazing, actually. That that was I, I like the way that the guys um, didn't went too much into like the the controversy on how you have to insulate your board. Um, Roman told them, you know what, just put um, uh, liquid tape, just put liquid tape on the main board and mm -hmm. just put some uh, like one one stuff of neoprene and just some tissue paper and that's gonna be fine. And people are like, oh, really? Like you, know no that you don't put two, two centimeters like, of Vaseline. Don't too much or anything. No, no need, no need. No. Yeah, it's actually, there, there was like, all the hardware stay fine and everything went, uh, went well. Yeah. Well, it's also true that the boards are a lot easier nowadays to insulate as well. So mm -hmm. They're already more advanced in the, in the quality control too, so that, that helped a lot. Yeah. So if you guys have any question about that competition, uh, just throw it in on the chat. Uh, we're still monitoring on it. I'm sorry. Yes, this uh, this is actually uh, this is uh, in English, so it's true that we might sometimes talk a little bit fast and with some weird accents because none of them is actually not like natural speaker. But that's. I hope you still have a fun time watching the show. <laughs> um, uh, one quick yeah go ahead observe I just I'm just looking at the video from the ROG camp was yeah. there some way someone just uh, putting uh, Roman's uh, uh, thermal paste on on the south bridge yeah yes <laughs> yes. Yeah. The yes. Guys, actually the guys <laughs> removed the, the yes. cooling from the main board to um, to Th insulate with liquid tape some of them say okay okay I'm gonna put some thermal paste thermal, thermal paste back on the south bridge since I since I'm at it switching everything why not <laughs> But it's cool, you know, it's like uh, it gives some kind of another, I would say, uh, cute, you know, but it's like some kind of, it's always interesting to see uh, the guys that do it for the first time do it, you know, they're always uh, either surprising you or doing something weird. <laughs> I hope they put some liquid tape on the on the mainboard connectors. It's very very important. <laughs> In the dim slots, it's even more efficient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more well, frequency, just... more thermal paste. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's, a, it's I think it's a cool concept, and that also 
they started with like the best kind of equipment, best kind of teachers. That's really like the perfect introduction. Yeah, actually, I don't know if that if that was because we were in Germany or because there were just uh, new people and very focused to it. But at some point, that was so quiet that I was actually yelling for the live because I was just so into it. And at some point, I just stop and there's like no noise, no noise at all. <laughs> yeah, in no the, one in talking the, in, the, in the room. <laughs> the opposite of, of, yeah, the, the uh, of gamers the assembly. Of gamers assembly, indeed. <laughs> well, yeah, the the console players at gamers assembly were something. <laughs> so um, I guess uh, we can move on to our next topic since uh, we are talking about uh, newcomers to overclocking, and those are the two competitions that are hosted at OC Esport. Um, called the Rookie Rumble and the Novice Nimble. So the Rookie Rumble is a competition for the guys that are from uh, rookie in the rookie league, so from zero to three months at age twenty. But and then the Novice Nimble is for the guys uh, from three months, or actually even even if you're a rookie, I'm quite sure you can enter. And all the way to enthusiast. So after one year, you move on to enthusiast. So you're no more novice. So um, and those competitions are actually very different. So for the for the rookie rumble, you have a you have a the the, the goal is to make the barrier uh, to enter overclocking as low as possible, and it's true that for people like us that might be uh, used to make screenshots of all the time and opening all the different tabs, even though some people still forget sometimes, you know, the, even in competitions, yeah, it happens, you know. <laughs> but this is a uh, this is to show that uh, it's true that for the rookie rumble, for example, for XTU or even uh, the GPU pie, it is now the, the the screenshot is not necessarily necessary, so you can submit a score without having to do all that and usually the people that arrive at HDI but their first submission is an XTU submission and then they start to compete and then through the competition if they want to uh, get ranked higher they eventually learn how to do the screenshots etc and um, so I think last uh, for the last rookie rumble the rookie rumble 16 there were like 400 people in that competition uh, which is a uh, pretty pretty uh, pretty impressive actually and uh, so right now for the Rookie Rumble number 17, there's already 80, uh, 99 overclockers participating. And that's opened on since, what, like five days? <laughs> yeah, six days. <laughs> <laughs> so the fifth day today and should be sixth of all. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, really, re it's really quite impressive. And I mean, like some guys, so um, from the one Rookie Rumble to the next, you usually see uh, some of the guys, uh, of course, that were in the top that keep kind of keeping there, but... What is cool is because it's kind of time-based to your experience in overclocking. The the amount the people participating is refreshed all the time, and you always keep on seeing new faces, uh, completely different systems. Some guys that have completely different hardware that actually overclock for very different purposes. Um, so yes. it's very very um, it's quite interesting as a as a concept. And it's very good to just jump in into yeah. the overclocking world. It's uh, like, as you said, the requirement is not that high, so you can just jump in there and and do your thing. Actually, I, I see from the ranking ninth, Oreo. Yeah. So the the guy from the Gamers Assembly is actually now participating in the Rookie Rumble for the first time. Yeah, we can actually look up uh, his scores, and I guess uh, so that was the XU score he was talking about on Facebook. I remember that one. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's still missing the GPU uh, GPU Pi stage, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, GPU Pi. So, but yeah, it's a uh, really interesting. Um, and um, then the next competition, the the novice noodle, that's a very different concept because it's for people that already are benching a little bit, and the idea is to get them to join teams. So the point is to not bench alone by yourself, you know, as a not like as a useless thing to do, but you know, like uh, benching alone, uh, like you, uh, Avery, you said, like the in the end, benching at events or benching with others is that's really where it gets really fun, and that's where the the the, the novice nimble is here for. So people join a team, and um, you are representing your team when you are benching in this competition. So you are not necessarily uh, just benching for yourself, and it's the average of of the top scores of that uh, of that team that actually makes uh, the the rank. Uh, of your score so it's like it, uh, we've seen some quite competitiveness between uh Cockerland, hardware uh hardware.info and overclock.net and i'm thinking for the second one uh it's gonna be again uh very very tight i was talking yesterday with uh use the guy for, uh, that is a uh, team captain of uh, hardware.info and he was literally saying that for this one they the first one they were not organized and not they didn't have any form thread or anything 
This one, the this guys, one before they... it started, they had already the form thread, they were already gathering different pieces of hardware they might need for this one, you know, preparing the benchmarks. So it's a, it's like a mini, a mini team cup or something like this going on right there. And it's a team cup just for people that just started. So it's like very different spirit, very new to it. So it's uh, the enthusiasm is like, you can really feel it. Uh, what do you think about that, Truth? I love it. I just love the way that you can just jump into the rookie number without much limitation. And you can just, from that, just speed up to the novice number. So you, you jump in because you just find that interesting and, uh, uh, and have some interest in it. And then you can just join a team that says, hey, I, I am here to get some help and share some informations or get some informations uh, on how to uh, like gain some more score and so on. And that's how you just get, end up like this. And then you usually when you join a team after you just join, you will stay in that team for quite a while. Yeah, especially if you make good, uh, good friendly connections. Uh, for instance, uh, Daniel, you are in uh, the hardware locks team. And um, yeah. like for for you, what what did your team played as a role in your overclocking career, if I could say? Uh, not the entire team. It was just Andy. I mean, Bench Bros. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He he was pushing me all the time just to join the extreme overclocking career because uh, I I was I was benching all the time with Walter. Um, I mean, for five or six years. Um, nothing wrong yeah. with water. <laughs> what? There's what? nothing wrong with water. <laughs> no, not not, not um, entirely. But <laughs> if you want to reach something real, <laughs> <laughs> something real. There we got it. There we got Actually, it. Actually, <laughs> sandy. <laughs> some sandy bridge CPUs are better on water. <laughs> yeah, might be, might be, might be. Uh, let's <laughs> hope we're gonna see never ever something again like sandy bridge, please. <laughs> I mean, that takes all the fun, doesn't yeah. it? Um, no, uh, um, honestly speaking, uh, the team Havelux is, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's important for me to push the team, but the team never pushed me. So, mm. um, yeah, I'd like to uh, join or attend other people uh, into the team. There is, there is one very good guy called Nick. Um, I mean, he won the Rookie Rumble 2 or 3, I don't know. And now we have Psycho. Psycho is a really good guy. Um, there are several guys uh, who want to join an extreme overclocking uh, event. We do in the in the near future with Hardwellix. I don't know if it's Hardwellix or just me and Andy. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> see what happens. Yeah, but, but it's very important to to see that overclocking, especially when you when you get into like a, this kind of uh, like the more into the enthusiast, the more into the extreme. Uh, it plays a big role to actually exchange with people. Uh, I mean, there's one reason why uh, we are doing that for more than eight years now. Actually, it's a little bit longer for for both of us to to do this kind of like stuff and like like the lab and so on. People are the reason why you continue doing it because you meet people, you have you exchange with them, and you exchange on a on a hobby. And the hobby is the overclocking. Mm. So so f for me, I just love the way that you can just jump to a team after that and, and continue for this. Yeah. Uh, Julius, you you had you, did you had a team when you did start, or you start by yourself? Um, you're, you're a warrior. You do everything by yourself. No, I well, <laughs> not an overclocking team, but I. Yeah. What team are you right now? Uh, I like I was. I was basically extreme systems was my. Uh, not, not overclocking team, but yeah. that's where I was going. Yeah, they, they, you went there either by, to uh, because they they used to have like a huge forum in the past and uh, and some information there. Yeah, yeah. but overclocking was uh, it was just like a, I was always interested in PCs. I work I was tweaking, building water cooling stuff like that. So yeah. But always, always on my own. I never had like a partner or something. But my dad helped me with when I needed help with like <laughs> metal work or something. <laughs> but you know, after that, and the most important thing is uh, when you go to the uh, like FW but wall tour, you enjoy so much being with all the. Yeah, guys. I mean, it was that's so why. Fun to... It doesn't that's matter easy. in the end what yeah. team they are in, and if you squash them at the last novice nimble, it's even better, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but since since I don't have like an, I'm not an overclocking team. I don't have an overclocking team, and 
hey, you so should events, events well like <laughs> <laughs> events like like the one in Poitiers. That's really priceless for me. It's really something. Yeah, it's hard to describe, but it's very important, and I enjoy it. Yeah, very much. That's great. So far, guys, don't forget that we are taking all the questions on the live chat of Twitch. If you have any questions for any of the guests, feel free to ask them. They're actually on the live chat to answering the questions. And uh, Timothy and myself will also answer some of the questions. Yeah, and if you say something funny, we actually just uh, say it out loud. So try to be uh, try to impress us. <laughs> Um, uh, Timothy, yeah. who, um, the, the novice number is gonna close in June, so it's like 11th yeah. April to the 6th of June. Yeah. So that's that's quite long. Indeed, that's gonna yes. be right during Computex for the end. Yes. So it's gonna we... be on the last day of Computex, pretty much. Last Actually, day of Computex? Yes. Wasn't that the HWBot World Tour Asia? Uh, yes, exactly. And uh, Computex uh, this year is seeing, uh, for now, two major uh, competitions. So we have the HW World Tour Asia, which comes with the the World uh, the World Series, which is the competition that comes with all the World Tour events. Um, so that competition is going to be very similar to what uh, we've seen at the LAMI TS or the Gamers Assembly in France. Um, it's going to be, of course, uh, trying. Uh, we we always try to find you know the the best balance of people that come with their own gear. And not necessarily, you know, the latest top end, you know, X99 system, and so everyone kind of, kind of have a chance, you know, to 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 get ranked at a proper level. Um, so that's gonna be what's going on there. There's no amateur competition at the Taipei uh, Computex. So there's no World Series for amateur. No, because um, but there is the World Series for the for the extreme. Yeah, because the main difference with Computex usually is that a lot of the guys from the overclocking community, like uh, Daniel Deere, are coming there um, to you know see the trade show, participate on the booth, do overclocking activities. And uh, usually, um, the, the, since our booth is not, or the place where we have the event is not at the trade show, it's mainly uh, not a private event, but it's something that stays kind of as, as a, like a very um, smaller social gathering of overclockers, even though we are like a 30, 20, 30 overclockers there, you know. And um, so we, we won't have like enough amateurs to run the whole workshops and things like that. And plus, on top of that, uh, none we, of us none speak of us Chinese, Chinese so, so it would <laughs> be, be uh, eventually a little bit hard to, to explain overclocking as well. Um, and uh, on the other hand, there's some overclocking uh, activities going on on the Computex uh, show floor, and this is uh, mainly the G-Skill uh, World Cup. Like every year for the past uh, three or four years now. Yeah, so the, the G-Skill World Cup is actually... Um, like you say, a long-running competition, and what is interesting about this one is that uh, they have uh, Gskill has a booth, usually a world record stage, and uh, they have this competition part uh, next to it, and you are just at the same time where they switch places. And the way it works is that it's uh, elimination through brackets, uh, so you have uh, different games pretty much, and um, so there's uh, guys that qualified online. And they are not invited there. They have to, they have to pay their own tickets. Yeah. But the main, the main goal, the main interest here for people uh, such as uh, Dan Cobb is, for instance, to win the ten thousand US dollars that the first guy of the competition can win. And I'm sure Daniel, that's exactly why you are going there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't came for the money, I swear. But if you give me 10k, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just did the qualification because of the nice pension we had to bench there. So, um, yeah, that, that was everything. No, um, uh, y you guys know I'm German, so uh, I am not qualified right now because it's really? not a chill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, why not? Uh, sure the ranking haven't been confirmed, right? So as long as there's no official announcement, we can only yeah. give pronostics on the current standings, which are the standings yeah. at the and closing the of the standings, competition. The current standings means that I am qualified. Uh, so I mean, un unless you failed all your screenshots, uh, there's a yeah. good chance you're you're going there. Yeah, it's, it should be like that. Well, right? Anyway, you already have your tickets, right? Yeah, I bought my tickets anyway. I don't. <laughs> it, it doesn't even matter if I if I can uh, join the OC World Cup or not. <laughs> um, no, uh, honestly, I'm 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 very very lucky to uh, get all these scores. Uh, it was it was a lot of work. Trust me, really. 
there are a lot easier processes than the small G3240. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, in terms of effort, how many how many hours did you count it? How many hours did you spend uh, bidding and benching and preparing for this? It should be around one week. A whole week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a whole week. I'm, I mean, I mean, really, seven days with twenty four hours wow. at wow. least, at least. Yeah. Um, I've I've only bought seven CPUs, so I was pretty lucky. Others bought around. 15 or 20, 25, whatever. And I found my best CPU, it was the seventh CPU. And after that, I stopped binning, but then started to, um, yeah, figure out how these CPU work based on my uh, Maximus 7 impact. Hmm. Yeah. So those CPUs, for those that are watching us, they're actually uh, not CPUs really designed for overclocking, like, I mean, at the extreme level, I mean, those CPUs have a locked multiplier, so you're basically you can only play with the the base clock. Yeah, the G3240. Yeah. Uh, you can play with the memory timings and that's the it. reference clock, and that's it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's, how, it's how high could you clock it? Sorry. How high did you, could you clock yours? Uh, one hundred thirteen point two. That was the highest base clock. I mean, in in the entire competition. Yes. So. You were so, extremely lucky then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was around uh, 3,505 uh, or 7 megahertz. Mm -hmm. and, and usually those uh, CPUs are running at 3.1. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually, uh, that's actually quite insane that uh, you guys went to <clears throat> test all these CPUs and... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and try to find what are the settings that will add to, to raise the base clock actually because <laughs> the base clock even for the amateur when we are um, like uh, t training them at the uh, World Tour Europe we sell them like oh yeah you can touch the base clock but pff, you're gonna gain like what like two megahertz like nah, not even just just use it in the last last resort like you have no other settings you can change you can use this one <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that, that, that's not really true. I mean, my, my CPU, the first test, or or all of them I got, um, the, the first test was, was always around 107 or 107.5 on air. And then I figured out some, some adjustments you have to set, like lower the um, IOA voltage and the uh, input voltage. And with, with some um, lower voltage, which is the <laughs> Truly overclocking. I mean, usually when you overclock something and make it cool, it is to make it cool. Uh, it is there for more voltage, and there you have to give less voltage. So um, yeah, it was pretty amazing to see how how these CPUs work perfectly. Yeah, yeah that's really 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 cool. And you, um, you Julius, are you planning to uh, come to uh, to Computex? Because we haven't seen you in those competitions, so I guess you have other plans. Oh uh, well, uh, uh, I'm having, I'm going to Asia at the time. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm like with a couple of friends. I'm having a, like a trip around Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. I'll try to come, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? Definitely, it's not, it's not definitely not yet. part of the competitions. Maybe <laughs> at the HW about meet. Yeah, and uh, Daniel, when you when you uh, for you it's gonna be your your first Computex or have you been there already before? No, no, it's my it's my first one. So what do you expect? <laughs> A lot of fun, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I mean, uh, there are uh, the, the first four days. Uh, so I'm I'm arriving on the thirty first of May, and um, the the first appointment is at ten o'clock in the morning. I'm arriving at six o'clock in the morning. Um, first appointment is at ten, and the next one is at seventeen p.m. I, I mean five p.m. And yeah, it goes on and on and on. So the fourth, the the, the first four days are totally planned. So. Man, the, the jet the jet lag gonna be so bad, so bad. Uh, after <laughs> after like seven years going there, I always try to arrive like at least two days before the show start. Is, is it really that hard? I mean, I have a direct flight from Frankfurt to Taipei within 12 hours. What? So just go, 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 go right, just yeah. 
I mean, as someone told me, he's from Poland. Just step into the plane, totally drunken. <laughs> I think I know who yeah, you're talking about, about that guy but is. we are not going to say his name. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> Nobody knows who are we talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so there was a question on the chat from uh, Flanker uh, CZ um, uh, asking how uh, no actually it was from 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 sorry yeah it was it was asking how many uh, how many CPUs and uh, so actually it's uh, seven so you tested seven CPUs thank God yeah 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 it was seven right yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, well, we'll see uh, what happens at Computex. I guess it's going to be quite interesting. Um, Truthman, in terms of uh, hardware launches, anything planned this year for Computex? I mean, last year it was Haswell E. Yeah. Uh, um, that's why Intel was having the, um, the how was it called, the competition? Uh, Unleash the, the Beast, the beast right? Un Unleash so they had the, the Devil beast. Canyons uh, logo and all that. Actually, I like that logo, like the Unleash the, the, the heat spreader. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what can we expect this year? Because uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, In terms of rumors, CPUs, yeah? there's rumors that there's gonna be some maybe new CPUs. There's some rumors there's gonna be some maybe new graphic cards. Okay. Yeah. To, to be honest, I do expect the. Um, the 980 Ti to be launched at Computex. Yeah. I have no information. I have no, okay. I have no information and I have no source and I have no proof for it. But according to the rumors, there should be some uh, launch uh, around Computex at that time. I mean, come on, that's the last show of the year because yeah. you have CES uh, early January, then you have uh, Sebit that is pretty much dead now, and you have Computex. Mm. So after that, you have to wait six more months to have something, and that's already like after Christmas, after back to school. So it's like completely another like round of budget and so on. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some stuff at the at the, at Computex. Daniel, do you expect uh, anything at the at this time? Yes, yeah, you've already said the 980 Ti, um, but but only but only if if the uh, 390X arrives on, <laughs> on time. So uh, I think Nvidia is just waiting for the 390X, just to modify the BIOS, get the right clocks to be the 390X, that's it. <laughs> Change three settings for the latency of the memory of the graphic cards and just launch it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. And and sure, I think we will see the Broadwell, maybe. Yeah, probably uh, uh, probably that we cannot run it anything on it, but we'll probably see it, or just in demo machines, I we suppose. We'll sure see demo machines anyway. Um, I don't, for sure. But I, I, I don't think we see any Skylake, so. Um, we might see some proof uh, of concept or prototype or maybe just uh, some demo system. It depends. It, you know, it always depends if they want to make the announcement two days before the uh, the Computex or if they want to launch it just after it or if they want to keep yeah. it for the back to school at the end of summer. Uh, you never know. I mean, maybe we see some mobile processes, but I don't think we're going to see any K processes. Yeah, yeah. Julius, okay. what are you doing there? He's trying to zoom uh, in into his face. I'm trying to look at Tim. I only see half of him, and I thought if I would like change no, the angle, I could see the rest of the. Because, because the capture for your Skype is just uh, chopping me off. But don't worry, I'm I'm all there. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Julius, so do you expect any hardware launches on Computex time? As and the... oh, I'm quite a bad guy to ask. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm a new CPU uh, on LGA 775. <laughs> no, no, not that old. But I, I just uh, got a Rampage 3 motherboard from Asus, so I'm uh, clocking something a bit older. Oh well, yeah. there's no, there's no bad at this. You know? Oh no, I do like the old stuff yeah. too. Yep. I'm, I'm not really like a overclocker who's looking for the newest. Uh, strongest NVIDIA GPU or something, so I'm, I'm not like competing for top ranks. Mm. I just like to meet up with other overclockers and maybe overclock stuff that brings me fun, which is <laughs> not much the Haswell, but the Helm CPUs and stuff <laughs> like that. So then, Cup, once you have the uh, well, well, actually, you did bench a lot of the of the of the NVIDIA card. Do you bench some AMD too? Yeah, I did in the past with the 290X Lightning, until it died. <laughs> oh. Oops. And it's gone. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it was not not the GPU or memory. It, it was a, a little controller, the uh, 0.95 uh, voltage rail. 
which mm. died. And then I had to e-power this little rail. <laughs> so yeah, it was running afterwards, but yeah, it was fucked up. So uh, then I got some 780 Ti's and was playing with it. Afterwards, 980, and now I have my Titan X. But yeah. I won't. I think I won't mod it. I don't yeah. think so. How is your benching with the Titan X going for so far? Uh, let's say it plays GDA 5 very well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no, no benching with it. It was just like yeah, let's one and a half what days. It, what it can do? <laughs> I, I just I just did some things on water, and I will I will put it on cold next week, but without any hard mod, without any special BIOS, just some open uh, power target, and that's it. So you're not planning it to keep it too long, I suppose. Uh, I will keep it definitely very long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for, for me, for just me, uh, thing, right? yeah, it's it's just for my for my um, daily rig for the next, I think, one and a half years. Uh, it will it will stay in that daily rig, and I think, as I said, 980 Ti should be very close. Um, that's the way to go in the future. But I guess I mean, for, it, for it, you, 980 Ti, stuff, you yeah. would just run four of them, right? That's your goal. <laughs> yeah, might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it might actually happen uh, if it's if it's potentially launched on Computex, let's say. Well, I suppose already not just for like like for Titan X, but we should see definitely some some uh, multi multi Titan X or multi. Of course, and you know, every time there's a new launch, there's always the, some of the, uh, it's not issue, it's a limitation in the driver because you need to optimize the driver for the, the most of your user. Most of the users use one graphic card. So you, you optimize for one graphic card first, then you optimize for two graphic cards. And then the three and four SLI systems, usually they are the last one to be optimized in the driver. So it takes a bit of time before yeah, it's It always take a little bit, like uh, maybe like three weeks, a month and a half, three months, depending on the kind of... Uh, or VGA you have, or driver, uh, and, and so on. And I mean, the, the Titan is from VGA, it's just the top, top high-end uh, high -end card. I I hope that they're going to make the 980 Ti a little bit faster. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a little bit weird. I hope they won't make the price a little bit more, because <laughs> it's already, like, completely retardedly expensive. But at least, like, uh, I mean, if you launch a new hardware, you need to make it faster than the previous one. Oh, I suppose. Oh, you make it a lot cheaper and less consuming or something. Different. Well, when you have Titan X, you don't really care on yeah. how much power you do consume. So since uh, no, not, yeah, not really. it, it, it was it was so expensive. So <laughs> who cares about the power bill? <laughs> yeah, if you can buy the car, you can probably pay for the bill, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. No. Uh, but uh, of... for me, the biggest problem on Titan X, I, I would bench it a lot more uh, if there were be a XP driver so that's for me the biggest problem because I think I have a really good 4770k uh, I could do some real damage on legacy benchmarks but you need XP for it and not with this card there's no driver right now I haven't found anything if someone could help me in the chat please help me I need a driver for it <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe at some point someone from the community will uh, like hack the driver from uh, maybe from the X, from the Windows Seven or Windows Eight to port that to XP, but I don't think that will ever happen. To be to be honest, I don't think that's in their priority anyway. Yeah, I mean like it makes no sense for them to have Titan X on XP. XP is anyway. so, totally out of support now. So. But you can bench a 980 on XP. Yeah, for sure I did a lot, too much. Hmm. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't like the trolls in the benchmark? No. <laughs> and there's two of them. Two trolls. Well, at some point you can't see them anymore. So. <laughs> Too much love. <laughs> um, so since we are talking about the Computex and ways to go there, there's also the the big XTU challenge from uh, from Gigabyte, which is uh, getting one person to Taipei, which uh, with a chance, I guess, to bench on the booth with the Gigabyte overclappers that usually go there. So you will have, of, of course, the, the in-house guys like um, Dino and Sophos yeah, like, and Like pretty much every year, like pretty much every year. I mean, the, for the past, uh, I think for the past five or six years, they have uh, a booth at the Taipei 101 yeah. in one of the floor. And you usually have uh, iCookie and so forth that do actually work for Gigabyte now. Um, and you also have sometimes uh, some guests from the team AU. You can uh, have Vivi like as Dino, well. Dino, sometimes you have Vivi, sometimes you have Young, uh, Pro. Young Pro and so on. So maybe if you win the, the big XU challenge, first you're going to get your trip to Computex. Yeah. Not bad. 
Yeah. And then uh, after that, you uh, you might end up like benching. And I'm pretty sure they're going to visit the, the factory too. Yeah, I suppose as well. That's always one of the, the yeah. things that is proposed. It Actually, is if really you are, fun to do. Yeah. yeah, if you are watching this show and uh, you are interested in how you make a motherboard, we did actually produce a video with Gigabyte in the, the, the Gigabyte factory lab in Taiwan like a few years ago. And if you look how to make a motherboard on YouTube, that is going to be uh, one of the videos that we did. It yeah. Look at it, it's like 12 minutes, but you know exactly on how they did produce the, the main board. Yeah, it's more like from time to time. Yeah, we did a cool one about the black edition too, which is very different. But it's like uh, you can also watch it if you look for the gigabyte black edition, maybe factory or something. I don't know exactly how they call the video, but it, it's like a bit more re more recent footage of the factory, and it's quite interesting as well if you want to see the manufacturing process. Um, so for this competition, actually, you need quite a lot of hardware to to win. Oh, yeah. And a lot of time. Like you need seriously, you need like a Z97 motherboard. You need an X99 motherboard. You need, need a, two CPU each time at least. Yeah. So you need four CPUs, at least. Yeah. So if you have four good ones or four that can do all the scores. And the point is to hit target scores. Uh, the target scores are of course not announced every time, but they give you a range. It's from this to this. So if you so say it's between. 1300 and 1355. Yeah, so if you're clever enough, you figure out that you have to hit them all like this, you're sure you get it, right? So, so you have to bench like 55 times and submit the 55 benchmark. And just increase by one point every time, so you mm -hmm. make them all. So right now, it's uh, the guy from uh, Indonesia, Coldest, um, that is um, in the lead. And uh, he has actually has quite a lot of, uh, of room ahead of the others. So I'm pretty sure... Uh, he will be, for now, according to my estimation, one of the, the lucky winners to get there. But who knows, maybe a Strunken Bowl, the German guy, or RT Surfers from the US might also, you know, yes. might also pass, pass there. Who knows? I mean, some it's gonna be, might, I think yeah. it's going to be really hard because once you uh, once yeah. you've missed a whole round of, of possible scores, you're already so far behind that you can only hope that the guy in the front will abandon but at yeah, some, but usually if you spend that much time in, in the lead, you don't just yes. Ah, so I think when the round bad, when the round four home. will be going on, then it it will be like a lot a lot harder to to yeah. catch up, like a seriously almost impossible. But it's it's a cool I think it's it's a cool way to to you know to get to Computex and because uh, why not? And Daniel, the, the, did you compete in that uh, big XTV challenge as well, or what do you think about that? Not at all. Um, for me, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I, I bought my, my ticket and all those competitions with the fly to Computex were done for me with this. <laughs> yeah, there's no need once you have your ticket to spend the time in those competitions. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not only time, it's also Money. liquid nitrogen, yeah. uh, hardware. I mean, I have all the gigabyte stuff and I have uh, all the CPUs you need for that, but yeah. yeah. Time and liquid nitrogen. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and you, Iru, if you didn't had any plan to come to Computex, would you have considered uh, participating, or what do you think about uh, hitting all those uh, all the all the stages possible concept? Like I this? didn't even look at. Uh, I just like know a little bit what they're about. Uh, were the targets? Did you need to use liquid nitrogen for those uh, score some, targets? Some of them you could reach them uh, on air or water cooling. Or water cooling. Usually it, with water cooling you could pretty much reach pretty yeah, much some, of them. Some of them were a little bit tough, but according to, to Corvus mm -hmm. you could uh, reach them with some kind of a chilled water kind of system or uh, close to the AC kind of thing to get the, you know. So because it's XTU, you know, so you don't need to have all, you can you can bench with the throttling at some point. Yeah, <laughs> Oof, yeah I'm... If if I if it was like uh, the competition was like two months mm. uh, later, I would have joined the perhaps the MSI competition, the one yeah. where where you have like a I don't know like a actually yeah the MSI best super is, pie or yeah you have yeah. you have other benchmark and you have there is there offer two tickets actually for the uh, for the Computex yeah so that's a mm. different competition actually it's uh it's uh, running about about for for months the whole month of April there's uh, seventeen people participating in this one. Uh, yeah, right now Extreme Adding is leading it. Wizardy is uh, it's yeah a little bit behind, but I mean like there's still a whole stage to go. And then you have a, a Spman from uh, Switzerland, Switzerland and Did Daniel from uh, from, um, from Taiwan. Taiwan. So it's actually oh actually Taiwanese that's pretty cool. 
It's a long time we haven't seen a Taiwanese in a competition. That's great. Well, they all end up working for the manufacturers anyway, so... Yeah, no, no, it's cool. So, yeah, there's a, that's the second competition that also gets people in. And this one, you, you say, that's the one you would, uh, you would have gone into, uh, uh, I will, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I guess I wouldn't like... I don't have the hardware for the Gigabyte Challenge, and I wouldn't join it because of that. It's really it, it's individual. Yeah. Uh, I think that I think it's nice, uh, nice. Uh, it's it's something different that it's like a little bit of luck, a little bit of overclocking skill. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I I just remember there was one, I think was it Gigabyte competition? Like I remember like three years back. What was it called? Like beat the beat the fastest. Yeah, something like that. There was like a target score set by High Cookie, and you needed to beat it. And mm-hmm. there were like not not the usual benchmark. There was like a Resident Evil benchmark and something else. And or also, I remember uh, back when there was uh, the uh, socket 1156, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. There was uh, by Asus. There was a, also like a creative competition, like the lowest possible clock or so slowest score or uh, highest memory pure memory clock and like these kind of events. But uh, yeah, they're really, really great to, as, to as standalone competitions. Though. But uh, for the for like qualifying for the world world finals, I think it's best to really like do best super pie best. Mark or something like that. Yeah, and uh, it's nice when it's possible to do with reasonably priced hardware, but it's it's up to the vendors, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I think for this year we can uh, we can expect um, yeah for sure 20, 20, 25 guys coming to Taipei. Uh, we talked with some of them at a uh, European event, at the German one as well. So you're sure already like people like such as Roman or Eight Pack. Um, you will have uh, Daniel. Daniel coming. will coming. Uh, this uh, I'm not too sure about the French guys. I guess uh, Wizard T is probably aiming <laughs> at the MSI competition right now. Who knows? And um, then yeah, there's some uh, the eight potential uh, guys qualified for the GSK competition. We pretty much know that all the guys from Jagat OC will be there. Yeah, Jagat OC told Always. us they are coming with I think eight guys yes. there. So let's uh, let's rent the plane and go to Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> so there will be uh, like a serious amount of people, and I guess uh, after once the the whole craziness of the Computex will week will be passed, everyone will be happy to to chill out with some uh, LN2 at the um, at the Eichdorfbad gathering, the world tour stop. So it will be. It would be nice, like we have a nice couch, you know, like uh, like Daniel's couch right now, actually. So it's pretty cool to chill out, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely, it is. It's very. Good. Yeah, and there is some room. Let me <laughs> let me hop in there. <laughs> and uh, wait, I'll, I'll just go to Dan Cup. <laughs> okay, come back. <laughs> Damn it, he's and, gone, and he's gone. Um, and don't forget, guys, everything will be live on Overclocking TV for the complete. Uh, so the complete world tour, actually the world tour in Asia will be full live. Yeah, it was going to be pretty cool. And so there will probably, like last year, be some interesting giveaways of stuff yeah. and t-shirts. And we, ha- we even have some stickers and things like this. I mean, like last year it was just, just completely crazy on the last day. We, we made like, I think like eight or nine hours of live Q&A with like people passing by, like mass men coming and then going out and then Romans coming and joining. And we just, <laughs> sometimes just like, it just was so much fun that we hope that uh, that's going to be the same, uh, the same this year. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the same thing yeah. upcoming this year. So I think uh, well, that's about it for today's show. It's already about an hour we are in. So um, thanks uh, everybody for attending. Uh, the next OC show episode should be airing sometimes next week. Um, yeah, it's every two weeks, so uh, sometime next week already. Things are going oh, pretty fast, fast. and uh, next week, two weeks. yeah, and tomorrow we're actually already packing our stuff to go to. Uh, actually, we're to packing the, tonight to leave tomorrow to uh, to the UK <laughs> event. Um, thank you a lot, uh, Dan Cup and uh, Iru for participating to the show. I hope you guys uh, had a great time. It was great yeah. to have you on board. I, I would like to say something go just ahead. before the end. <laughs> go ahead. Amy, je t'aime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's recorded. We're going to send uh, the link to the video to her. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, for the guests that doesn't know who Amy is, just look for Mystery Amy on Facebook and you will know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you very much for being there. Uh, thank you guys on the live chat asking the questions. We, uh, we, we did like that pretty much. Thank you, Daniel, for being there with us. Uh, do you have a one last word for all the viewers? I just said you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Excellent. You. <laughs> Thank you guys on the live chat. Uh, 360 Matt, Aerotrax, Flankers, Lul, KOC, Martin White, Orion, Ricky, and all the other Transmed even and all the regulars guys. Thank you guys for being there. If you like this show, you're on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channels. If you're on Twitch, you can subscribe down there uh, on the click the follow button. Yep. And uh, don't uh, we, don't listen to just say we actually even have an Instagram account now. So. Yeah, we so. now have an Instagram account. You have yours and my, uh, you have yeah. our personal account, and we have uh, Instagram Overclocking TV in As one well. word. Yeah. Can so if you guys want to have some cool pictures and stuff, just don't forget to see um, follow us there. And yes, we will announce what we do with the GTX 960 um, soon. Uh, just very, very busy soon. right now with all those. Will, will I be spammed with cheese on that Instagram? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's because <laughs> we were in Europe a lot. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have all a good night and uh, talk to you very soon. Ciao. Bye bye.